Hey everybody, Kristen here and welcome back to my channel. So this is a part of my minimalism series of 10 things you can declutter in each part of your space. I'm doing my living room. Um, if you haven't checked out my 10 things to declutter from your bathroom and bedroom, please check those videos out and then do this one. So this is going to be my living room. So the first item that you can declutter that oftentimes we can just like not really think about it or bring these items in is any type of uncomfortable furniture. Furniture that you don't enjoy sitting in, furniture that when you sit on it, it causes back problems, stiffness, soreness, tension. If it is not 100% comfortable for you and you don't enjoy it, whether it's the comfiness of it, the look and feel of the couch, or the chair, whatever items you have in your living space, then you need to get rid of them. A living room should be a place for you to gather and to talk with friends and family, to watch movies together, to play games together. And so you really want to have furniture that number one is going to seat and fit everybody in your family, but also furniture that's going to be comfortable for you to lounge in and relax. Now, my couch, as you can see here, it is older, but actually it works really well and it is quite comfortable. It has firmish cushions and I can actually restuff them. There's a zipper in the back of each cushion so I can restuff them. So actually it is quite comfortable and it works well for me. I have honestly fallen asleep on it a time or two so it is a pretty comfortable couch and I didn't have to break the bank to get it. It's a very neutral tone and it fits with the vibe of my apartment. So the second item to get rid of is furniture that just doesn't fit like physically fit like you have so much furniture in your living room that it doesn't fit you have a bookcase a tv stand an entertainment center a coffee table end tables a chair a recliner a couch a beanbag chair too many things in your living space in your living room now this is going to be especially true and probably prevalent for those of you that live in an apartment or have a space that is smaller but it can also happen where we accumulate a lot even in larger living room spaces as well so really think about how many seats do I realistically need in my living space for my family? Sometimes what I say is whatever you need or think that you need in terms of seating, get rid of and remove one furniture item, one less than what you think you need. Because oftentimes we think that we need more than we do. So I actually don't even have a coffee table right now. I actually have two end tables, my couch, and then a recliner. If you have any items that you're just they're cluttering up your space, they're making you feel anxious, you're not using them, feel free to declutter them now. Third thing that gets very carried away, getting rid of and decluttering any type of electronics that you don't use that are broken, old, worn out, whatever the case may be, but electronics that you aren't using. So this can be video games, this can be video game systems, it can be Wii's, it can be any type of electronics that are in your living space that you aren't using. It can include speaker systems, it can include um, a DVD player, and I'm actually going to finally declutter my video player. I use my DVD player like once a year, and in my opinion using it once a year is not justifiable in keeping it. Me, that's not because I'm I'm not I'm not actively using it. If I was using it several times a week, then I would obviously be gaining value from it, but I'm not. So actually, I am going to be getting rid of my DVD player. The next thing is DVDs, VCRs, VHSs, the old things that basically just people really aren't using anymore. Now, if you use them and gain great value, awesome. But like I said, the fact that I'm only using my DVD player once a year tells you that I'm not using my DVDs. I'm going to be decluttering them. A lot of them I weeded out. I used to have a ton of DVDs and now I have less than 10. So I don't have a huge stack here. I have like my select favorites here of DVDs. So I whittled down my collection a lot from when I like moved into this apartment. But I do still have a few. I think I'm probably just going to give them to family members that can use them. Or if no friends or family want them, then I will at that point donate them. But Letters to Juliet. Love this movie. It's a great rom-com. But again, have used it once a year. 27 Dresses. Love this movie. One of my favorites. Again, have not watched it at all in the past 365 days. Um, Perks of Being a Wallflower, great movie, highly recommend, so, so, so good. Tearjerker, amazing story, amazing storyline, great actors. The Wedding Planner, also like this movie, 
have not watched it, have not used it, get it, rid of it. Things I Hate About You, one of my very favorite movies. I haven't watched it in the past year. I'm not going to watch it. Other Woman, also great movie, super funny, but I'm not watching it. Haven't watched it in the past year. Next thing that can get really carried away in our living spaces, especially the living room, is pillows. As a female, if you guys are females, you probably relate to this. Pillows can get a little crazy. And I've set the limit of I can have two pillows, maximum of three, in my living room at once. Now, I only have one couch and one recliner. So this is what I say. I say I can have two pillows on my couch and one pillow on my recliner, and that is the max. And actually, right now, I have a blanket and a pillow on my couch, and that is it right now for my fall vibe. So I would consider adding potentially one more pillow, but that's it. I max out at that. I'm not doing more than that. I'm just not. I don't need that many seasonal items. I don't need that many pillows in general. And to be honest, most of the time, if I'm sitting on my couch, I'm having to move the pillow to sit there anyway, because I'm not actually using it. Sometimes I do, but more than likely, I'm not. So that's my tip. Get rid of some pillows. Set a limit for yourself. Next thing is blankets, blankets that you don't use. My blanket collection is a little crazy and I'll fully admit it, but I have used all of my blankets in this bin. There are four of them in here and there are two blankets, two white blankets in this basket here. So this is in my spare bedroom, guest bedroom, and this other bin is in my living room. Actively in the fall and winter, use all of these blankets on my couch and on my bed. Okay. These blankets are all for guests, okay? I just, in the winter time, it's cold, and I love cozying up with a good blanket, especially in the fall and winter. Here in Minnesota, it gets cold. I typically don't have my apartment set super, super warm either, so I love cozying up with a nice blanket. So, and then these are for guests, and honestly, I do use these because I do have friends, family members, sisters, cousins, and my niece and nephew stay at my apartment every once in a while. It's not like super frequently, but it happens a few times a year. And when they do stay, I need the blankets that are in here. Like if I didn't have them, like it would be a problem. It would be uncomfortable. My guests would either be cold or uncomfortable or both. So I really want my guests to feel comfort, feel homey in my apartment. And so that's something that does bring me value and is important to me. So I am going to be keeping these blankets. I thing is clocks. Now I might get some kickback on this one, but honestly with the clock on my microwave and the clock on my phone, I don't need a physical clock hanging up in my living room. I used to have one. You guys, if you watched my previous videos, have probably seen it. It was a big round one, brown and cream colored off of Amazon. And I had it. I used it a lot in my other apartment, but it got damaged in the move and it stopped working. I tried replacing the battery. I tried monkeying with it and fixing it. And I was like, oh, I should replace it. And then I just got rid of it and I realized I didn't mind that it was gone. Like, didn't miss it. I never really looked at the clock to see what time it was anyway because it was easier for me to look over at my microwave that I can see from sitting on my couch or to just look at my phone. I know that some of you guys probably don't prefer that and you like the physical aesthetic of a clock, but to be honest, I just don't use a clock and I don't really plan on using one. I don't super love the idea of hanging one up or spending money on one, so I'm not going to be replacing my clock at this point in time. That may change in the future when I have a house, but for right now, we're going sans clock. Um, the next thing is books. Now, I've talked about this in my bedroom, but this is also something to consider with regards to your living room. I have all of my books on my TV stand, either in the drawers or laying and sitting out, and I have determined that I'm going to be getting rid of this book. I've given it to several family members to read, and it is honestly one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books, but here's the thing. I was very, very sure that I would reread this multiple times, and I didn't. <laughs> So while well, that's great, and that was my expectation, that was my hope, it didn't happen. And so I can accept that and be like, okay, the reality is I love this book, one of my favorites, but now that I know what's going to happen, this book is not suspenseful the way that it was the first time I read it, and I'm not going to be rereading it. If I ever did want to reread it, I could simply get it from the library. Another area that can get really, really carried away is toys. Now, I don't have kiddos running around 
so I don't really need to worry about this when my niece and nephew come. I usually grab some items from my office and bring them in and then bring them back, but really evaluate, are there any broken items, used items, toys that my kids have outgrown, items that are just no longer necessary or useful. You just don't need them anymore and feel free to declutter them. Yeah. Next and final thing is games. This is an area that can get pretty crazy, but feel free to declutter any types of games. I don't have a ton here. I would recommend decluttering any games that have missing pieces. That's kind of an easy one if they're broken or if you're just not playing with them anymore. That is the 10 things to declutter from your living room. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next one. Love you all. Bye.